us now go to Dr. Michael Owusu, who is a virologist with KCCR. He's also a lecturer at the KNUST. Doc, uh, I'm grateful for your time this afternoon. What does this mean that 90% of the Delta strain has taken over our communities? What does this mean to our fight against uh, the COVID-19 virus? Uh, good afternoon uh, to you. So this for me is not surprising. Uh, it's to be expected that the Delta variant will eventually take over uh, all other variants in the system. If you remember, we started with the original Wuhan strain that has almost been taken over by the Alpha strain from the UK. And now we have the Delta, which is running very quickly and likely to overtake both the UK variant and even the South African variant. And because of the fitness of this virus, it's about 60% highly transmissible and has that kind of efficiency to be able to infect more than the, than the other one. So if you study the nature of coronaviruses, at any point in time, they try to mutate and double up their strength, to give them an edge over previous ones and take over so that they will be able to at least withstand uh, any other form of resistance that you, I mean, they, they will be exposed to um, for the human population. So this is where, uh, I mean, we have to be very careful. They are able to mutate when they have that luxury in running through the population. If you don't give it a chance to run through the population, you, you are able to reduce the rate that the virus mutates or changes. But if you give the virus an opportunity to run through the system, it will, it will transform and change. So even with the Delta variant, if we are still not careful, it is possible that by the time this third wave ends, it will end with another form of the Delta, which may also be much stronger than the Delta we are seeing today. It's going to do that for some time until you are fully vaccinated and until the population is well protected to be able to stop this transmission. Until then, we have to be dealing with the forms of these viruses for some time. And, and that is where we think the protocol adherence is very important to slow the speed and to slow the transmission and to slow even the rate of mutation of these particular uh, viruses. Now, Doc, whilst we struggle to contain the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are also having to um, struggle to deal with the challenge of our health facilities being fragile, just like we heard the GMA say. I mean, what does this mean, again, for our fight? More deaths? I mean, if you study the, 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 the nature of this virus and the various epidemic waves we've gone through. The first wave, we had some number of deaths, but of course, in the second wave, the deaths were more than the first. So if you want to project and to predict how things will be, it is very likely that the number of deaths that this Delta strain will continue to may become more than the, than the second wave. We, and this is not definite because you, you know we have vaccinated a lot of the health worker populations. And they're also, most of the vaccinated people are elderly people that have chronic underlying ailments. So to some level, we are able to protect um, these lives and to ensure that um, they'll be able to go through. But we still have a large number of people out there who are still susceptible, who are chronic ailments, who are elderly. And we even know that even for young people, they now suffer severe disease. So if things are to remain like this, and if nothing is done and people continue to behave the way we are behaving, if we don't take care by the time this third wave ends, we may likely record more deaths than what we saw in the second wave. But we have still an opportunity to, to, to break this transmission chain and to cut down on the deaths and possible spread of this virus by adhering to the protocols, which is why I'm quite happy that in the Shanti region, the minister has laid down some, uh, they made a statement and, and tried to, I mean, pronounce that the police are going to ensure that all people are, I mean, will adhere to these protocols. I, I have confidence that if we are able to do this quickly, we can succeed in cutting down these projected deaths and possible projected uh, transmission. But if we allow things to go through and people still behave the way we are behaving, then my fear is that we may have deaths that may be more than the second wave, and even, even the first wave. That is the fear that some of us have.
Um, interestingly, I mean, some time ago, we saw this whole thing working out. I mean, the enforcement, we saw the police. Whether it was a nine-day wonder, we do not know. But of course, let me ask you, should we go back to the days of stricter restrictions? I mean, closure of schools, closure of uh, um, air, sea, borders, and, and, and even at worst scenario, should we go for a lockdown? Well, uh, normally in pandemics like this, you have several options to look at. Uh, lockdown is the last, is the very last option you want to think of as a country because of the consequences that it brings uh, you know, toward, uh, to ordinary people. So in events like this, you have, you have some options, some low hanging fruits. So the very first is what I believe in the president's announcement, uh, he made some of this, that one, we should be able to adhere to the protocols, has brought us some guidelines on funerals and how people are to conduct themselves, how people are to behave at parties. You will expect that in the next one or two weeks, I mean, from the time the president made the announcement, there should be at least a reduction in number of new cases uh, possible active cases and a reduction in deaths if people are to adhere to all the things and the, the pronouncements that were made. But if cases continue to double at a very faster rate and if deaths continue to increase, uh, you will expect that there should be a second level of uh, measure that may involve uh, perhaps a restriction of numbers, could be gatherings or in, in funerals, in, in parties, in pubs where you can cut down the number of who can be at a certain point in time. If it's 100, you cut it to 50. If it's 20, you cut it down to five. Conferences will be banned. If that does not work, then you can trigger the next level of restrictions. And the very last option is the lockdown, which some of us are still not in favor of. But I think that there are other things that we can do. And for me, the enforcement is the bit that is likely to help us if we are to go along that line. So let's see how the next one or two weeks will be like. I'm hoping that these measures will have an impact and possibly force a, a reduction in the cases we are seeing. But if nothing happens, then of course, you will expect some second or 10 levels of measure uh, to be put in place uh, and to see how the trend will change. I think that areas we can manage such, such as behavior and enforcement and people trying to do what they're supposed to do, I think that we can manage it and not to get to the point where uh, government will begin to, uh, I mean, pronounce restrictions on schools, on, 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 on people's movement, which may have some dire consequences on all of us. So let's hope that people will behave well and to do things that will not get us to the point where the government will look at some of these total options. I, I hope we don't get there. So, our will determine where, where we are going to be. So, Dr. Uso, for the Delta variant, uh, what should we be looking out for, I mean, in terms of symptoms? And what extra measures are we supposed to be taking as individuals? Well, in, in terms of symptoms, uh, for now, for most of the data and the literature available, there are some one or two uh, differences people observe, but this is not so significant to even mention. And most of the clinical presentations seem to be similar uh, to what we saw in the alpha variants. Although there are people that have some, 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 some other ailments that may be accompanied, but because the numbers are few, uh, you may not be able to say or project and to say that this is what is happening with the Delta variant. But in terms of protection, you know, when the alpha variant was in circulation, people were more uh, careful to the point of putting on double masks and others were wearing the N95 masks too, so that they would be well protected. I think that if there is any better time to put on double masks, this, this is the best time to do that because this particular variant, which is almost much stronger and 60% more fit than the alpha variants, meaning that if you even don't fit your masks well, you can easily do, contract or transmit so aside the hand washing, the physical distancing, and then uh, making sure that you don't stay at enclosed areas and reporting your symptoms whenever you think you have this, I think that for those who are, have, may have underlying conditions and for people who are especially not vaccinated, as much as you can, if you can put on a highly fit mask, even N95 or a double uh, mask than the double surgical mask, I think that it will be more helpful so that we can 
you can ensure that you are well and adequately protected so, so you don't expose yourself uh, to what we are seeing. So we are told that this uh, Delta variant actually has a higher viral load. How much uh, viral load does it have compared to the others we've seen before? Yeah, so we did a study uh, during the uh, very first wave. Uh, we look at about 70, 72,000 samples and the average viral load that was associated with the Wuhan and even the alpha variant was about 1,300 copies uh, per, per mil of sample. Uh, with this particular Delta variant, we are here to quantify the load. But if you look at the cycling threshold that we are seeing, uh, it seems to, to be correlating with the values close to 2,000 to 3,000 copies per mil, if you have to quantify it just based on the city values. And other literature has also mentioned that the number of copies of this Delta variant is, is well over 2,000 copies. So what this means is that because the load is very high, if somebody is infected, he has a chance of transmitting it at a very faster rate. What it also means is that if you also carry the Delta variant, because of the high load, it takes a longer time for you to clear the virus. So it is not surprising that with the Alpha, in two weeks' time, people may get well and may clear the virus and become negative. But with the Delta, because of the high load of the virus, it is possible for people to live with the virus even after two weeks and still have some residual amount of the virus in their system. So, so the load that, that is being recorded out there looks like something that is, is much higher than the alpha, maybe in the two or three thousand copies per mil for, for what, for what uh, they have seen so far in the laboratory. I'm grateful for your time this afternoon. Dr. Michael Owusu, he's KCCR virologist and a lecturer at KNUST. Uh, Dr. Michael Owusu, stay on for me, don't go uh, yet, uh, because I want to bring in the other perspectives to this conversation, because there are concerns of a super spreader event that happens tomorrow. Well, the fix the country campaigners have vowed to strictly adhere to COVID-19 protocols in the midst of the COVID third COVID wave, when they finally take to the streets this Wednesday for their match, anticipated protests. A convener of the group, Urua Ado, says they will roll out a comprehensive COVID-19 strategy for the street protest. Um, listen. Um, if you're going by the science of, of COVID, I mean, the science of COVID, and according to the World Health Organization, yes, um, vaccination seems to be effective when it comes to dealing with COVID. Then again, the most effective way is to mask up and uh, maintain your social distance. So basically, if we're all in our mask and we're all um, uh, ensuring that we have um, safety, we're maintaining a, a, a safety social distancing me mechanism, then we should be fine. Um, as part of this, we have um, deployed marshals who would be on the day, who would be guiding um, the people or protesters um, as to how to go about um, the distance and um, ensuring that everyone has their mask on. We would also provide uh, free masks for people who might show up without the mask. But we encourage everyone to show up um, at the protest, on the day of the protest, to show up in a mask and uh, be ready to also social distance, uh, um, take into consideration all the social distancing protocols. So that was a member of the Fix the Country campaign, which happens tomorrow, that protest. Uh, Doc, are these assurances enough considering what we are dealing with at the moment? Um, ideally, uh, you, you want everybody to engage in activities to express their rights and to be able to uh, I mean, I mean, put forward uh, issues that they feel is of much concern to them. But if you are in the acceleration phase of this virus, where uh, cases are doubling uh, almost every, every week, and uh, you have uh, hospitals that are under pressure, I, I, you wouldn't want to, to engage in other things that will put undue uh, pressure on the system, because uh, the same security that are being asked to enforce the protocols at, at various regions, I believe are the same security that to be called in to observe uh, um, these uh, gatherings uh, and these uh, activities to uh, make sure that people are here, people follow through. I'm quite happy that the convener 
uh, has 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 some idea about about the protocols that is going to be put in place in terms of looking at physical distancing, ensuring that masks are supplied, ensuring that sanitizers are available for people, and to making sure that everyone who is on the ground do what they are supposed to do. But my fear is that if 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 people gather beyond their strength, how much more can they do? Uh, it is it is likely that in the midst of these large gatherings, people out of excitement uh, may decide to put off their mats, may decide not to even uh, do the things that they are, they are going to do. In that case, what do you do? And if in that case people become infected, you cannot reverse this. It is, it's, it's irreversible. I wish that if this could be done at the point where you are in the decline phase, you are likely to be safer. But at the high speed acceleration phase, uh, the best will be to either as much as possible, uh, reduce this or cut out the numbers, define numbers that can be at a certain point in time. But if you allow people to go through this way, uh, it is possible this may contribute to already our difficult system that, that we are finding ourselves. So uh, I, I think they should still look at it as much as possible, reduce the numbers or set some limits. But if they can, uh, postpone to, to a point where you think that we are in a full decline phase and things are normal. That, that point rather may be helpful for, for, for us. Doctor, also before I let you go, just a quick one coming from a viewer. He, um, he wants to find out whether you still advise that people join this demonstration or they should simply call it off, considering the rising in cases. Well, left to me alone, it is better to call it off and rather to look at organizing this when you are in the decline phase. I remember that in the log acceleration phase, cases are rising quickly. And the more people become infected, the more these people are going to put pressure on our health system. We have said that the health system are quite fragile, and the doctors are on the ground, but the cases are still on the rise. And like we said, with this data variant, even if you put on masks, you have a possibility of transmitting. So in such a difficult situation and where cases are rising quickly, Ideally, we wouldn't want to encourage gatherings of any form because we don't have an upper hand in controlling people. It may get out of hand. And people who innocently will be part of this may be exposed to one way or the other. So if the convenience can, it will be better for them to postpone to a point where we think we are safe and have things more relaxed. But in this heat where we find ourselves with cases rising quickly, I think that if they can, they, they should be able to postpone. But then if they are, if they are not able to postpone, and they have to define the cutoff number in addition to all the protocols they are putting in place to define a limit that they will expect to, to gather and to space enough to allow them to go through the safely so that they don't put the lives of ordinary people at risk. Well, we'll wait for a week or two and monitor with keen interest and see how our situation gets better or worse. I want to thank you so much, Dr. Michael Owusu, for joining us this afternoon. He's a virologist with KCCR and he's also a lecturer at the KNUSC.